all of us have grown up with The Mask Movie, starring Jim Carrey and Cameron Diaz. With his amazing acting abilities, Jim Carrey embodied the eccentricities of The Mask. The Mask is a comfort movie for a lot of us, but despite that, a lot of us do not know that The Mask was initially a comic book that got adapted into a screenplay. Owing to comics, we get a very in-depth idea of what The Mask is like and understand how its powers work. So, in this video, we will take a deep dive and talk about the origin of The Mask, the personality of The Mask and its weaknesses, so that no stone is left unturned for this amazing character who made our childhood so entertaining. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Where did the mask come from? Now, before we delve into the powers of the mask, we have to understand where the mask comes from. In the original comics, we learned that the mask originated from a mysterious tribe in Africa. The shamans used their superstitious, spiritual knowledge to make the mask following their ancient rituals. This mask was made of jade and it was used in different rituals of the tribe. When the user used this mask, the user seemingly ended up in a magical reality that allowed the user to have cartoonish abilities. However, when it comes to the movies, we see a different origin story of the mask. It's assumed that the mask was created somewhere between 4 AD and 5 AD, and from the design, it is assumed to be made by Loki. Loki is the Norse god of mischief and night, which makes the power of mask activate only during the night for the users and stops working when the sun rises. But there have been two movies, and both movies contradicted this origin story. In the first movie with Stan Liepkes, Dr. Newman states that this mask was the one where Odin imprisoned Loki. So whenever the mask is in use, the user becomes Loki. But then again, when we see the mask in action and being put on different characters, we see that the mask is more driven according to the will of the person wearing it and not Loki. In the second movie, it is said that Loki created this mask and added some of his powers to the mask. Then, seeking chaos, he threw this magical artifact on Earth to be found and used. But then we see the power of the mask explored further in this movie, and it seems very strange why Loki would let humans get similar powers to God, as in several instances. We see Mask Tim overpower Loki himself with the powers he has. However, in a deleted scene of the first movie, we see a group of Vikings come across the mask at around 1080, and then lock it away in a chest and throw it in a river, claiming it is a curse from Loki. In the animated series, we are at first told that the mask was created in Nordic Europe in 1180, which was a lie that Dr. Pretoria said to get Stanley and the mask. When Stanley faces off against the villain Skillet, we learn that the first ever user of the mask was Attila the Hun in his time of 434 AD to 453 AD until his death. It seems like using Attila the Hun as a reference, we can conclude that the mask was made in the 5th century AD. The origin can be related to Loki, but they can also be related to Madame Suspiria's family, as her family has been dealing with magical artifacts for generations. So while the origin of the mask remains unknown, it is a strong magical artifact that's confirmed. Exploring the different appearances of the mask in the movies and comics. As we know, there are three different pieces of media where we get to see the mask. We have the original comic, the animated TV series, and the movies. In each of these, the appearance of the mask and the actual artifact is different. When we look at the mask in the original comics, we see that the mask is made of several pieces of jade crystal. They are placed in a way that gives the mask an oval appearance. With that appearance, the mask covers the entirety of the face. The details for the eyes, nose, and mouth are carved on the face of the mask. However, in the movies, we see the mask, which is made of wood, with clear Nordic and Scandinavian inspirations. The mask is clearly a Viking type. It has a concave triangular shape and the top is cut in a straight line. There are distorted cracks around the whole mask and the color is very dull shade of green as opposed to the bright jade counterpart we see in the comics. On the surface, the mask has two holes for the eyes and one for the mouth. Instead of any hole carving for the nose, we see a rusted piece of metal instead. It seems to be made of bronze and it has five spherical dots on it. The topmost and the biggest spherical dot has an L stamped on it. An official version of 
of the movie, directly inspired by the comics, does not have the L on the fifth spherical dot. It is instead replaced by another spherical dot. In the animated series, the mask has a much more oval shape. It has a thin stripe of metal going down the middle until the hole for the mouth with spherical dots on it. It too has two holes for the eyes and is made of wood. Despite the design changes in the masks, all of the masks work the same way. They have a symbiotic relationship with the user. When they come closer to the face of the user, it attaches itself to the person and covers their face, turning their skin green and rubbery, while their mouth seems bigger than before. The mask distorts and deforms the face of the user, which gives rise to the alias of Big Head. The user faces tremendous changes during the transformation, and when the mask is taken off the character, How does the mask impact the wearer's mind? As the mask itself is a magical artifact, it has quite an effect on the minds of its users. Whoever puts the mask on ends up getting their deepest desires out in the open. The mask does not alter the personality of the user. Instead, it brings about the deep, sweated traits of the user and uses them against them. This accentuated personality, while not different from the user's personality, is very liberating for the user at first. Because of its liberating nature, more often than not, at first, the user enjoys using the mask. The powers of the mask allow the user to fulfill their desires and express the thoughts that they have kept hidden for so long. Not only that, the confidence boost that the mask gives its users allows the users to be the center of attention, which can be quite addictive. But this has a downside as the more time the user spends in the mask, the more things they do while under the influence of the mask. Now, the memories of these events are not wiped clean once they take off the mask. Instead, it leaves a residue and stays as a fogged up memory. Like that of a dream. But when the user realizes that whatever they did as a mask was real, the consequences of their action dawn upon them. Just like the memories of the event leaves a residue, so does the personality of the mask. So the longer the cycle goes on, eventually the violent personality of the mask becomes the default personality of the user, effectively driving them crazy. This aspect of the mask has been explored in every adaptation. Luckily, Stanley is a good man, and he figures out a way to stabilize himself because if he did not, Big Head would have ended up taking him over completely. This explains why the user is often seen as extremely overwhelmed when they take off the mask, because we can imagine how much stress the mask puts on the minds of the user. Diving into the complex personality of the mask One of the most prominent features of the mask is the wacky personality that comes with wearing the mask. We have seen time and time again that when the user puts on the mask, their personality changes completely. But what truly happens? In order for us to understand how the mask works, we need to first understand the basis of someone's personality. Our mind is made up of three different parts. We have ego, super ego, and ID. When we desire something that originates from ID, the super ego tells us what is right and wrong about the desire that we have, and we must consider the pros and cons of it, while ego is the one who decides how you will fulfill the desire. For example, wanting to get a drink is what ID does. The super ego decides what to drink, as in can we drink water from the tap or the sewer, or are we going to get bottled water? Ego decides whether we are buying the bottle of water or if we are stealing it. Now, when the user puts on the mask, it lowers and almost gets rid of the ego and super ego. So, in a way, it gives the user's deepest desire a chance to be fulfilled. When we look at the character of Stanley in the comics, movies, and animated TV series, we see that there is a very clear difference between them. This difference in how Big Head, the masked personality of Stanley, acts is because of how Stanley is a portrayal deals with his emotions. Jim Carrey's Stanley is more prone to feeling sorry for himself. We see him pitying himself a lot, which is why when he gets the mask, he becomes more courageous, more confident, and can go and get the girl he wants, whom his unmasked self was scared to approach. When it comes to Stanley in the comics, he is a man of good heart, but he also harbors rage and revenge is something he definitely wants to get. That's why, even though he first said he would save innocent people, as Big Head, he goes around killing innocent people who had done him wrong in the past. This personality of the Big Head is very much manipulated by the powers of the mask to bring out the deepest desires, rage, childishness, and jealousy that you have in your heart. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
Exploring the long list of incredible powers of the mask. Let's take a deep dive into the powers of the mask. The mask has infinite powers. To put it simply, if you can imagine it, no matter how absurd it might seem in reality, the mask can do it. This is because a mask works on 2 and 4 or cartoon physics. We get to see cartoon physics in a lot of American cartoons. One of the best examples of cartoon physics is in Tom and Jerry. And Tom does not fall until he looks down. Whenever he gets smacked against something, he turns into a 2D object and falls like a sheet of paper. This absurd physics that is in no way, shape or form aligned with the physics we have in our real life is what inspires the power of the mask. The user of the mask can easily change their appearance. We see it when it comes to Stanley, who goes from a nerdy looking man to the big head dressed in snazzy boots and colorful suits the moment he puts on the mask. This change of appearance is something that helps Stanley conceal his identity for a while. As we see in the movie, the mask affects the strength and the speed of the user, allowing the user to lift up heavy objects with ease and move at extremely high speed. We see Stanley move like a tornado just because he's trying to get away from shotgun fires in the movie. Now we all know that scene where the mask pulls out what seems like a gazillion guns out of nowhere when he's cornered by a very vicious gang. While they were fake guns, the ability that he could produce guns out of nowhere falls under the mask's power of imitation. It can imitate anything that is present in the real world and can manifest anything that the user can think of. Obviously, the mask cannot change things that exist in reality, and it only works by manifesting the imagination of the user, which can be inspired by things present in reality. Users of the mask are virtually immortal. We see Stanley get shot up, and in a huge comical moment, he simply takes a drink and we see the liquid pour out from the bullet holes in his body. Now, if he were not wearing the mask, he would be dead, but the mask made him immortal and invincible. In the comics, however, we do see that despite the mask being present, the user does bleed like a normal person, but the powers of the mask provide a huge immunity against most injuries. The mask gives its user the ability ability to transmutate. That is, it allows the user to have elasticity, duplication, size change and more. When we look at the animated series, we also see more powers, such as being able to shoot force gusts, ability to fly and invent gadgets out of thin air, to name a few. In the animated series, we learn something crazy about the mask. Every mask user is connected to the cosmic consciousness. This cosmic consciousness is what drives the mask users insane. However, as we follow the shenanigans of Stanley and Evelyn, we see them figure out their own way to bypass this and stay stable. Heat vision is also a nifty trick that the mask has up their sleeves in the animated TV universe, which comes in really handy given that although insane, the mask is extremely good at tactics. The mask is closed mouthed and very cautious, which makes it very difficult to beat him in combat. The mask also makes the user a disarmed combat specialist, which is why it is hard to take him down. The user of the mask does bleed like normal humans, even though we do not see it in the movie and the animated adaptations. The user is unable to feel any pain. As their inhibitions and consciousness are completely removed thanks to the mask, the user of the mask tends to treat others in the same way as they are treated, forgetting that others are not invulnerable. Stanley and Evelyn are good people in their hearts, which is why their masked alter egos, the Big Head and Eve, are careful enough not to kill others. When it comes to the comics, we see the more grotesque version of the power of the mask, where Big Head can take on the disguise of another person only to rip the face off in a gory fashion to disclose his true identity. Overall, the mask is extremely powerful in the right hands, and we're thankful that we did not see the last power on screen, as that would have left quite a bit of trauma in us. How can the mask be defeated? What are some of his major weaknesses? Now, as we can see, the mask is an incredibly powerful object. But if you've noticed, the abilities of the mask throughout the movies, animated TV series and comics, you will realize that it has a few weaknesses. One of the main weaknesses that the mask has is it loses all its powers when it is not attached to the user. As we see the adventures of the mask, we notice that whenever the user pulls it off of them, the user comes back to being normal. But what if the user is in a fight and does not pull it off of them? Then what happens? Well, in a fight, if a blow is hard enough, then the mask may come off their face, rendering them powerless. If the 
the user loses consciousness temporarily, then the mask comes off. We also see that if the user goes to bed wearing the mask, like in the movies, the mask gets off the user and again, the user loses their power. Another huge weakness when it comes to the mask is that it is very user dependent. The mask has several capabilities and powers, as we have discussed before. However, that does not mean every user is able to access them. Based on whoever is using the mask, the powers of the mask come out. So in a way, if the user is not creative enough, they may not be able to access the stronger powers of the mask. Now, as there are three separate places where we see the mask in action, as in the comics, the movie series, and the animated TV series, each version of the mask has its own weakness. For example, in the case of comics, if the user of the mask is able to traverse through dimensions, the mask is not going to give the users its power if the user is in the wrong dimension or in a separate dimension. The mask powers are only available in the home dimension, if we put it in that way. And unless the user gets back into the home dimension by any external force or is sent back by the one who imprisoned them in another dimension, the mask won't work. When it comes to the movies, the mask has a different sort of power. In the original Jim Carrey movie, we see that the mask only works at night. That is why Jim's character is treated like a crazy person when he tries to show other people how the mask works as he is trying to do that in the middle of the day. This is explained by the fact that the mask belongs to Loki, the Norse god of mischief, and his powers peak at night. So it makes sense why the mask only works at night, which causes more drama because this weakness renders Jim's character helpless when it's daytime. However, when we look at the sequel of the mask, aka the son of the mask, we see that Loki himself is able to use the mask while it is daytime outside. Hence, the only way someone can use the full potential of the mask throughout the day is if they are Loki themselves. However, in that movie, we do see the dog Otis use the mask in the daytime while trying to murder Avery. So it is almost a mystery when the mask can be used and cannot be used. Another huge downside of the mask is that in the comics, the person who wears the mask is forced by the psychotic will of the object into behaving in such a blasphemous way. In the movies, the characters are usually unsure of whether the things they did were happening in reality or in a dream. But when some side character mentions the events of the night before, the user ends up realizing that the things they dreamt of truly happened. This personality-altering effect that the mask has on its users is something that is extremely hard on the human psyche of the users, because then they're no longer sure who is in control. When it comes to the animated series, we see that the mask can kill you if you have the flu. Let me explain. So when the user has the flu and puts on the mask, the mask amplifies the symptoms of the flu, making it extremely worse and more severe and almost killing the user. The only way to bypass this kill switch of sorts is if the user, who is sick, travels to Bavaria and eats these special termites to cure the illness. Either that or the user has to refrain from putting on the mask until the flu is done. This is the most serious life-endangering weakness that the mask has. In the animated series, we also find out how the mask can backfire. We know that the mask works based on the deepest, darkest secrets of your personality. Now, if you as a user bring those parts of yours out, then the mask will simply melt off and refuse to work on you. Because for it to work, you need to have repressed sides of your personality. And that won't do if you bring those repressed sides to the surface. We also find out in the animated series that there are a few external things that can make the mask stop working, such as tight titanium places that are closed off, extreme cold, and even voodoo magic. We know that the mask attaches itself to the user, so there is a level of molecular binding happening when the user puts it on. So like in the animated series, when Stanley is shot with a biomolecular disruptive cannon gun which affects molecular binding, the mask stops working and falls off. One of the greatest weaknesses that the mask has is the insanity that it brings. If you give in to that weakness, things obviously won't end well for you. This is why we see that Stanley and Eve, who use the mask, try to keep themselves stable, allowing them to explore and use the mask to the best of their abilities. Marvelous Verdict While the Mask movie was quite comedic, the original comic book definitely shows the true horrors of the powers that the mask has, making it one of the more interesting magical artifacts as the source of power. With such an arsenal of powers in the wrong hands, the mask can definitely prove to be a weapon of mass destruction. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone and see you next time. A tummy gun! Oh! <laughs>